My dear friends, sometimes one has to do with people who are unable to handle certain subjects. Approach them and what will they do? They will circumnavigate at all costs. They will raise their voice. They will attack. They will attack other problems not directly linked with the central issue. Anything to deflect attention from what they would prefer not to face. One day, I was reflecting on this issue while replying to the letter of a good lady who still writes very regularly, and she was presenting the case of her brilliant daughter. This lassie was well qualified, but there was no way that she could dialogue with her. I want to address one specific issue in this field, because it's linked with the Gospel. People are quite keen on having a good reputation, but this other issue of the rest, which only he sees, they will not really handle. They will do all to have a good reputation. There are ways and means of acquiring one. Hypocrisy. But this question, they will not allow it to be in any way attacked, approached or mentioned, even slightly. What the Lord refers to here as Gehenna. It would seem that that word from the Hebrew would be actually a geographic one. There was a place where things were burnt, and there was a perpetual odour outside the city, hence a reflection of the other place where human refuse is burnt. Now, if one approaches that, which is actually the only thing that matters in the long run, as the Lord warns us, fear him, then they will start to create a situation in which they have the upper hand. How do they do it? They are beyond it. They have surpassed it. Is it not true? Anyone who will not face the issue in some way will make a mockery of it. And by the way, a little parenthesis, something not dissimilar is happening also in church circles. Notice the way that some people become quite aggressive if one mentions a certain approach to things. Why? They would prefer not to face it. They have surpassed it. And they then take this position of being superior to the one who wants it, when actually, if one analyzes all the dynamics in question, if there is a superiority, it would be an inferiority on the part of a person who is unable to experience anything but what he knows. I would prefer to see people with that same openness which, for instance, a young person has to all that is actually different. Because people coming from the generation of what the French call les 68 heures, those of 68, refuse all that went before. But as a young person, it has nothing to react against. And we were quite puzzled to see at our monastery in Italy, which was, remember, Carutese in Italy, hundreds and hundreds of young people camping in tents around the monastery, that they actually did not have that reaction to the past. They actually were quite happy to be bathed in something mystical, even for an hour and a half. We think we're pleasing the young. Perhaps we're actually not. But this issue, I approached it from this point of view when handling this lady in the reply. It is basically an incapacity to do elementary philosophy. Logic would demand that one opens every question standing before our eyes. Why not? 
and that one calmly and passively goes into all the elements linked to the said question, wanting the truth, and therefore wanting the arguments related so as to find it. If one does not that, want that, one is actually presuming that one has the truth and one has nothing more to learn. Now, with regard to this central issue, do you see how clever the enemy of the soul is? If he's got the whole of humanity in such a state that they will discuss anything else but this. Because it is more comfortable not to face it, what will they do? They will annihilate it. They will withdraw their sovereign permission that it exists. Their mind is so powerful that the bright glory that they have within their certitude will cancel any possibility of anything beyond the grave. Is that not the case with a normal person now in conversation? They are superior to fairy tales. Now listen, modern science actually has made a big comeback in this field because they haven't any more science on their side. If one wants to look into the question from a scientific point of view, one cannot any more ignore the very large quantity of scientific evidence that actually there is a continuation of the soul. Now, what is actually quite interesting is this. The people who had that idea now, in increasing numbers, are having what we refer to in modern science as NDE, near-death experiences. Because of medical science, they are recalled after the heart has stopped beating and each one has a story to tell. Now, it's not always the same story, but it starts the same. The first bit is this. At a certain moment, a big change takes place. There is no longer atrocious pain. Why? Well, death is precisely the moment when one can't take any more. So that is gone. So they find themselves in, initially, a well-being of emptiness of pain. Now, those who are called in those early stages back only know that, and therefore may get a false impression. Those who have a longer time in that near-death experience, or actually death experience, if it goes far enough, don't have the same story. And there is a sufficiently large number of cases saying the same thing for modern science to, by now, respect the issue. Some months ago, I looked into it in some detail, and I found a very interesting document, documentary by the BBC, no less, with very balanced evidence, and experts looking into it, and in all simplicity coming to this conclusion. Whereas before, science presumed that the soul was linked to the functioning of the brain and therefore ceased at that ceasing of the functioning of the brain. Now, the weight of evidence is such that we have to face the problem, and this is an expert, a scientist, saying this, the probability is that actually the soul is not dependent. Do you see how fundamentally important that discovery is, even in science? Science is not on the side of those who make fun of the issue. Remember that if you're in that kind of conversation, because if you are placid and know all the facts, it's far more powerful in gaining an argument. I just conclude. If you're that way inclined, and if you're that way equipped, you can do that research yourself by googling NED. You'll find any amount of testimonies, and you'll find quite a few, unfortunately, of suicides and so on. Because that actually is another issue. Suicide presumes that one is ending it all.
unfortunately, the pain through this one is only getting more quickly. <laughs>